So, do you want to know how to get your readers flipping pages and staying up all night to finish your book? Well, buckle up, Buttercups, because I'm about to tell you. Good hair? <laughs> we don't know her. Hello everybody, Aylin Hart here. So what we're gonna be talking about today is a video that I have talked about a lot, I have hinted about it, but I've never really gone into detail about it. Now that trick is how to get a reader to pick up your book and maybe they sit down to read your chapter or two and then they're up until three in the morning and they can't stop reading your book. Maybe they didn't get any sleep and they have to go to work all red-eyed and exhausted because they could not pick your put your book down. So how do you get your readers to do that? And the answer is simple. It's creating little mini cliffhangers at the end of each chapter. Now you might be saying to yourself right now, Aylin, uh, how in the hell do you do that? Well, I am about to tell you. And once you get it, you're going to be amazed. It is so simple to do, but it is really, really effective. And it has honestly become one of my favorite writing techniques. So think about a TV show and TV shows do this in a lot of ways. So first, they do little mini cliffhangers um, right before they're about to jump to a commercial. Usually it's some um, hint at information or maybe a revelation that has come up and then, you know, the camera kind of pans out all dramatically and then they cut to commercial. They do this for a lot of reasons. Uh, the main reason is probably to keep you in your chair to watch the commercials until the show starts back up. So they do this like in a lot of ways. At the end of each episode, they drop some huge bomb on us. Like if you are a fan of The Walking Dead like I am, maybe they're all trapped in a bus and there's like a horde of zombies. And of course you know that they're gonna get out, but you know, of course you're freaking out and waiting for the next week, you know, biting your nails or, um, and then at the end of each season, they drop massive bombs on us to keep us just dying and talking about it until the next season resumes. And they do this by creating cliffhangers, some big, some small. And it's really, really easy to do in your writing. And as soon as you pick up on it, you will see it. You'll see the opportunities as you're writing. So what is a mini cliffhanger? A mini cliffhanger can be a lot of things. One of the big things is that maybe something really unexpected happens. Someone arrives or leaves. Maybe there is a reaction to something or an action that is left unfinished. And this is one of my favorites to do in romance. For example, in one of my books, How We Fall, this is one of the books where I really started employing the use of cliffhangers at the end of each chapter. And one of my favorite things to do is to leave an action kind of hanging. And so you're just like, God damn it, I have to go to the next chapter. So in How We Fall, Finn and Haley are boss and employee, and so um, they have a very undeniable attraction to each other. And one of my favorite things is that I started a kiss and I didn't finish it. So in this one, Finn is driving Haley home. Um, they She just did her first day at work. There's this attraction that is just sizzling between them. Um, she doesn't want to give into it because she thinks that he's kind of above her in class. He obviously doesn't want to give into it because um, she's his employee and it's kind of wrong, but I mean, that's so fun in romance. So they're looking at each other in the car and, um, she says, I should go. My voice stuttered. Yeah. He nodded with a gulp, swiping his tongue across his lips. It had me sensing that crazy urge to taste him again, but it was the hitch in his voice that sent me lunging forward for one brief split second. We were staring at each other. Finn muttered something under his breath, but it was too late. So you know the kiss is about to happen. They're leaning into each other and I just drop it right there. So of course you are waiting for them to kiss each other. So what are you gonna do? You've gotta flip to that next chapter, right? Other ways to create little mini cliffhangers would be something failing to happen or a change that is about to happen. Again, we get back to a realization or maybe a decision that is about to be made. So in this chapter, in again, I'm going to do how we fall for this section of this video, but um, Finn has been teaching Haley about food. It's something he's really passionate about. Well, I'll just read it here, but it was just one of those things where he kind of has this realization and you realize you have to get to the next chapter to find out what is going to happen. 
For a second, I thought she felt it too, the crazy food rush, the beauty of creation and precision. Her nose scrunched up a bit before her luscious lips opened and dropped me right back down to earth. Okay, well, you have to flip to the next chapter to find out what it is that her mouth opened up to say that dropped him right back down to earth because he's having this moment where he is doing something he's super passionate about. He thinks she's super into it. And then she says something that just kind of like bloop, drops him right back down to earth. And you have to flip to that next chapter to find out what it is. Another way to create a great cliffhanger is to just drop a little one-liner, maybe just a brief statement that kind of maybe foreshadows what's about to come or just a statement that leaves you kind of wondering, you know, okay, what's about to happen now? So once again, from how we fall, um, when Haley first gets her job, she kind of offends her boss the first day. He finds out she lied about something and she is kind of obsessed with the idea that maybe she's going to get fired. He doesn't fire her, he gives her the job, she comes for her first day, but she has this problem where things just kind of come out of her mouth before she can think about what she's just said. So the one-liner from the end of this chapter is, Haley, Enzo's voice sing-songed with a little hint of warning. Maybe we should move on to the rest of the menu. No, Finn smirked. His eyes flickered with something I couldn't quite make out. I'll take it over from here. Maybe this is how I get fired. So once again, just dropping a little one-liner to create a little bit of intrigue and to find out, okay, does he finally get pissed off at her and fire her like she's pretty much thinking that he's going to do. Creating little mini cliffhangers should foreshadow maybe the setting and tone of your book. Um, it can create an emotional tone. It can create kind of the pace that you're gonna go at. So now I'm gonna move on to something like this. And again, I really adopted the use of creating mini cliffhangers at the end of my chapters. And again, I definitely saw it in those reviews that people could not put the book down. And I attribute it to that. So one of my favorite examples is Siobhan has just found out that her ex-boyfriend Vin is coming back into town and this is not exactly good news to her because um, he kind of left her hanging, he didn't ever call her like he said he was going to, and um, there's some other secret things that happen. But one of my favorite one-liners is this one. But that was the least of my concerns. Vincent Owen was coming to town, and I wasn't so sure of what to say to him. That was, if I would say anything to him at all. If WTF is an emotion, I was feeling it deep in my soul, because this was a holy shit moment of epic proportions. So that just kind of foreshadows how she's feeling about him coming back into town. So now you definitely are, want to flip chapters to find out what happens when they finally come face to face because I'm setting the tone that, you know, we're ready for a big showdown. So Vin has a reaction to seeing Siobhan and it is definitely not the same as hers. He wants her back. Um, she's making it definitely kind of hard on him to even have a conversation about something really big. Um, if you have not read the book, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there is definitely something that pulls them together so that they kind of have to have these conversations and these talks. Um, that's def you know, that's the glue of a book is, you know, especially romance, people kind of have to have a reason to be together. You can't just tell me that they're going to be together. So they have this big reason that they have to have these conversations. And so Vin has quite the opposite reaction to Siobhan. So at the end of a chapter where he sees her at a funeral and they've had this conversation and she's agreed to talk with him in private. So this is the conversation between the two of them. Okay. She pressed her eyelids shut and drew her lower lip between her teeth. Okay. I'm probably leaving in an hour or so. You can come by later. She looked like she regretted those words almost immediately, but I felt like I just won the damn lottery. So now we know that when this conversation happens, you know, Siobhan is like, this is a holy shit moment, and he's pretty excited. So again, it's like a little bit of a foreshadow. So I'm not going to read any more excerpts, but I hope that you kind of get the idea of how to create a cliffhanger. So again, you can leave it with a statement that foreshadows or sets the tone of your book. You can have a realization that you don't finish. Maybe someone unexpected shows up if you have maybe a villain 
or some kind of a hero that everybody's been waiting for and they show up and you just kind of drop it there. In romance, my favorite thing to do is to start the romantic action and then just drop it so that you have to go to the next chapter. Um, I did a really mean one in something like this where I got the sex started and then I ended the chapter and moved it into the next one. And again, it's just a way to keep those pages moving because by creating a little cliffhanger, you really, the you know, people who are reading it, they, they have to get to that next chapter because they want some resolve to that thought, to that action, to that appearance, to that, you know, bomb that you just dropped on them. They want to know what's going on. So I hope that this was in some way helpful. I mean, I know it's a teeny tiny subject and a short video um, for something that's really huge, but I would love to know if you are going to practice this and if you try it out in some of your books, like send me a sample chapter. I'd love to see, you know, what you've done. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me via my email, which is linked down below. Um, you can DM me anywhere. I would really love to hear if you are going to adopt this into your books and how it has worked out for you or if you're having struggles with it. Until next time, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and then hit that little no notification bell so that you get notification every time I post a new video. And until next time, I will see you guys later.